I'm going to read seven very short stories. Negative emotions. A well-meaning teacher, inspired by a text he had been reading, once sent all the other teachers in his school a message about negative emotions. The message consisted entirely of advice quoted from a Vietnamese Buddhist monk. Emotion, said the monk, is like a storm. It stays for a while and then it goes. Upon perceiving the emotion, like a coming storm, one should put oneself in a stable position. One should sit or lie down. One should focus on one's abdomen. One should focus specifically on the area just below one's navel and practice mindful breathing. If one can identify the emotion as an emotion, it may then be easier to handle. The other teachers were puzzled. They did not understand why their colleague had sent them a message about negative emotions. They resented the message, and they resented their colleague. They thought he was accusing them of having negative emotions and needing advice about how to handle them. Some of them were, in fact, angry. The teachers did not choose to regard their anger as a coming storm. They did not focus on their abdomens. They did not focus on the area just below their navels. Instead, they wrote back immediately, declaring that because they did not understand why he had sent it, his message had filled them with negative emotions. <laughs> they told him that it would take a lot of practice for them to get over the negative emotions caused by his message. But, they went on, they did not intend to do this practice. Far from being troubled by their negative emotions, they said, they in fact liked having negative emotions, particularly about him and his message. <laughs> The next is a story adapted from a letter of Flaubert's. The Coachman and the Worm. A former servant of ours, a pathetic fellow, is now the driver of a hackney cab. You'll probably remember how he married the daughter of that porter who was awarded a prestigious prize at the same time that his wife was being sentenced to penal servitude for theft whereas he, the porter, was actually the thief. In any case, this unfortunate man, Tolle, our former servant, has, or thinks he has, a tapeworm inside him. He talks about it as though it were a living person who communicates with him and tells him what it wants. And when Tolle is talking to you, the word he always refers to this creature inside him. Sometimes Tolle has a sudden urge and attributes it to the tapeworm. He wants it, he says, and right away Tole obeys. Lately, he wanted to eat some fresh white rolls. Another time, he had to have some white wine, though the next day he was outraged because he wasn't given red. The poor man has by now lowered himself in his own eyes to the same level as the tapeworm. They are equals waging a fierce battle for dominance. He said to my sister-in-law lately, that creature has it in for me. It's a battle of wills, you see. He's forcing me to do what he likes. But I'll have my revenge. Only one of us will be left alive. Well, the man is the one who will be left alive, or rather not for long, because in order to kill the worm and be rid of it, he recently swallowed a bottle of vitriol and is at this very moment dying. What a strange thing it is the human brain. And five very short stories. Can't and won't. I was recently denied a writing prize because they said I was lazy. What they meant by lazy was that I used too many contractions. For instance, I would not write out in full the words cannot and will not but instead contracted them to can't and won't. <laughs> judgment. Into how small a space the word judgment can be compressed. 
It must fit inside the brain of a ladybug as she, before my eyes, makes a decision. Contingency versus necessity. He could be our dog, but he is not our dog. So he barks at us. <laughs> Contingency versus necessity, too. <laughs> On vacation. He could be my husband, <laughs> but he is not my husband. He is her husband. And so he takes her picture, not mine as she stands in her flowered beach outfit in front of the old fortress. England. My left hand keeps trying to type another E into the word acknowledgement, the British spelling, while my right hand keeps deleting it. Maybe my left hand grew up in England. <laughs> 